hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Asher, I travel and fashion videos every week. <laughs> and this week I have a guest with me. Hi! Present yourself. Uh, so hi, I'm Clara. I'm also French and also making videos in English. Travel related video, but especially about China specifically. And yeah. So today we're gonna like talk about because she's been traveling a lot, especially in China. Yes. And uh, you guys know I've been in the U.S. and Finland and everything. So we were I I thought we would do a video about like culture shock and um, like stories we have related to it and how you deal with it and stuff like that. So yeah, that's what we're gonna do. So yeah, if you like travel fashion, feel free to subscribe because that's what we do. And then, <laughs> I hope you like this video and let's get into it. Not a writer. Okay. Culture shock. Culture shock. What was like one of your biggest like moment where where you like realize it's a culture shock thing and like it's just is like that. Like, have you ever had like stories where you had like a conflict with someone and like it's obviously just due to culture? I guess I kind of realized there was a culture shock because... <clears throat> so, I'm not especially a uh, really like polite and delicate person. Mm -hmm. Like, I can be a bit... yeah. <laughs> okay, that's like, that's now a thing. <laughs> now you know. But, I mean, I'm just generally like polite with like customer service and like you don't want to be confrontational. Yeah. Like, okay. I'm not a conf confrontational person. I'm not afraid of confrontation, but like, it's anyone basically, you don't actually actively search for it. Yeah, some people do, but you don't. Yeah, I don't. And when I was in China, I realized that in some cases, people, like, you don't have a choice. And it's not a bad thing necessarily to uh... be confrontational. Because uh, it's typically the case uh, if you want to bargain for something, or just if people want to sell you something and you don't want to, or just generally if you want to get something. Mm -hmm. And people are making stories, like, they, like, you want to buy a train ticket and they're like, mm, but we're not sure we have any left. Yeah. That kind of thing. But they're not telling you outright no. Yeah. But they're making you understand that maybe it's difficult, etc. And in my typical fashion of communicating, like, in my way of communicating, I would just be like, oh, okay, well, is there any way to fix this? Or, like, I would be really, like, polite. Yeah. And I realized in China, it's not working. Uh, and... So how did you do that? Like, I can't... Like, it was a cultural shock, because for me, it was, like, my way of communicating, my way of yeah. behaving... Didn't match. Yeah, it's not appropriate. And I, like, if I choose to keep being, like, my way of communicating, if I keep doing that, I'm, I'm not getting anywhere. Yeah. I'm not getting anywhere with my way of doing it. Yeah, that's the thing. So you kind of have to develop your other self. Like I kind of had to develop my Chinese, the Chinese version of myself. Yeah, that's true though. You do like develop like that's a lot of people say like when you talk a new language, you change personality, and I think that's mo that not really due to the language, but more to like the culture that's with the language. Exactly, and you develop habits around yeah. that. Because like w when I'm uh, in Germany, I'm a lot more like focused and like task orientated. Really? Yeah, like I'm, I'm <laughs> like in Germany, I have a friend who I had, I have in, in France, right, she's a, a friend from France, and she li was living with me in Berlin, like we were li both living in Berlin at the same time, and she's always late, like, and we're talking like five hours late, like she's late, and um... It doesn't bother me so much when I'm in France, but when... when because, we're, because we're typically yeah, late Yeah, we're fashion. late too. I was late for this video, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Hi! I'm always late. I'm, no, I'm really sorry about that. It's okay, it was like half... An, uh, it was quarter of an hour, so... So, we're good. No, but anyway, and... You know, in France, I know it's in our culture, so I tolerate that. But the weird thing is that it really pissed me off in Germany. And it's so strange... But it's, it's the it's same the person, person, like... You are the same person, she's the same person, but just because you're in a different place and different environment... Just because, like, you know, like, the fact that I'm in this this country, I, I expect what would be expected in this country. That's good, because that means that you're really integrating yeah. the local culture and the way of doing yeah, that. Because I think that's how you should do it. Yeah, but, of course. But yes. I had, yeah, I actually had, like, because, oh yeah, sorry, forgot to mention.
mention, um, we did videos on uh, Clara's channel and we did about horror stories and embarrassing stories that happen while traveling. And I will put her channel down below and uh, her Instagram as well and everything and we did like our video is hilarious so definitely check it out. There's a lot more shared than we had wished for but never mind. And um, along with that I just thought I had a story related to culture shock where uh, when I was st studying in Germany mm -hmm. Uh, one of the French guys did a, a party, right? Okay. And so he texted everyone. He was like, the party is at around 7. He was like, at 7. So, at like, at 7 or something, he calls me. He's like, Astrid, can you come over? I was like, yeah, I'll be there in like 10 minutes. Because I'm still French, so. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, like in, in France, like 7 p.m. means like 7.30. Right, exactly. So, and then he's like, I was like, why? He's like, all the Germans are there. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> and all the Germans had been waiting in front of his like door, and it was seven, so they knocked and were ready to get in. They knocked in at seven. At seven. Oh like, god, god, that's my worst nightmare. <laughs> I know, right? Like, but he was, if I'm storing a pot, I'm never <laughs> exactly. And the thing is, like, French people, we're never ready. Like, there's a, a <laughs> saying in French that you have the five minute politeness rules for the five minutes. Yeah, f you, I, my, like it's from like in maybe it's a question of families, but in my but in my family it's fifteen minutes. Yeah, for the housewife to get ready, like that's yeah, the fifteen saying. minutes of politeness. Politeness. And and so they came in, and because we're used to that, we do take those fifteen minutes to get ready. And he was like coming out of the shower with just a towel around him, and like but he doesn't speak German. Oh, oh. <laughs> so like, uh, so that's why he called me. Like, Astrid, can you come and like entertain them? Cause, like, <laughs> I don't know what to tell them. It's just like. Hi guys, I'm half naked, and like, and all this Spanish. Like, come, <laughs> like, come and take the, like, yeah. give them company, like, give them company, because you know he can't talk to them. Yeah, and in that meantime, you can get dressed. <laughs> also, which, like, yeah, <laughs> that too. <laughs> that could be useful. <laughs> and then all the like Spanish came around eight. And yeah. You know, like that's the thing. It's like yeah, it was like like the the culture shock here was like so obvious because like everyone came around at the time they thought it was supposed to happen. Mm. And Paul Pierre just stood there half naked in front of all the church. <laughs> yeah, like that, there's a real thing with like being late or being on time in yeah. general. There's a real like if if you're if you're in France and you go to a date and you're there on time, you're too needy a little bit. Yeah, it's like that's a bit weird. Yeah. <laughs> and I think like culture shock, like culture also influences like how you see things and like proportions, like what is important, what's not important. Or like oh, what is okay. big like or what's small. Uh, you know, like the, your vision of things. I'm not sure I am get like do you mean like values? Or well that too, of course. But, yeah, but, but like, like um, you know I told you this story like uh, when I was living in Germany, my roommate was Chinese. Mm hmm and oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah I remember that and story. And she asked me, like, yeah, so, uh, why are you living in France? I'm like, yeah, a very small town. And she's like, yeah, me too. And, and then she was like, yeah, we only have a couple of million people in our town. I was like, yeah. Yeah, because in China, it's not really a real city under a million people. in Athens. Yeah, so for that, and I was like, yeah, and like, what I meant was like 600 people, <laughs> which for her is like small. a building, you know, it's like, yes. so I was like, okay, we really definitely don't have like, you know, the same vision of what is big and small and everything. Yeah, it's really interesting. And, like it really influences distances too. Yeah. Because, I I mean, you, you've been to the US, so I think yeah. you have the same thing. But when I went to China, for me at first, when someone would tell me, oh, this city is close by. For me, close by is a 30 minutes ride yeah. by car. But close by means under four hours of train. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's it's the same in the US. Yeah, I think I think it's the same. And then you come back. Yeah. And you have the reverse culture shock. Yes. yes. And for me, like per, for me personally, the reverse culture shock is harder. Is harder. The reverse culture shock is harder. Is harder. I agree. I totally agree that because it's it, it's your own culture and it's annoying. Yeah, exactly. Because when you go somewhere to live there for a long time, like. You prepare yourself, you know, you like, I know yeah. things are going to be different. I know I'm going to have to adapt. So of course, it hits you sometimes. Yeah. But you know it was necessary in the first place. And it's normal, it's another culture. And you have the pleasure of getting to know it. And yeah. And it's an adventure. It. And like, yeah, exactly. It's an adventure. You're like, okay, this is a new challenge. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. And then you come back and you're like, oh, it's supposed to be easy. I'm just going home. Yeah. And then it's not it's easy. It's not easy. Yeah, I had that with that. Like, for example, in Finland, people are so chill. 
And in Paris, people, like, if you don't run with people, you'll get run over, basically. Like, people in Paris are so fast. And, like, when I came here, I was like, oh my goodness. I'm you know? from Paris, so I'm not, like, yeah. I, I, I don't notice that, but, yeah. But, like, compared to Finland, people are, like, running all the time. Or, like, this thing of, like, always being late. When I came back from Germany, I'm like, get yourself a watch. Like, <laughs> stop being late. <laughs> ah. But, yeah. It's, like, not the same notion of respect. Because, yeah. like, for a French person, being late is not disrespectful. Yeah. For German people, it is. I, I agree with that. Um, reverse cold shock is definitely harder because because it's your own culture. You don't see it as culture shock. Yeah, like you. Know? you but I think it's mostly because you are like you kind of have the mentality of I shouldn't. Yeah. I shouldn't have, have difficulties because you're just not embracing it. What was the hardest like um, reverse cold shock you had? <sighs> so many things. <laughs> Uh, I like it's really weird, but I kind of miss the, the freedom, which is weird. I agree with that because, but I think it's just like not especially the difference in like the specific culture. It's just the fact that when you live abroad, you have this kind of sense of this is a moment, this yeah. is a moment in time that I will not relive, and I'm gonna enjoy it at its best, and I'm gonna make the most of it. And then when you come back, you can't apply the same mentality, yeah. and you kind of have the yes here. I'm making a routine. We're gonna be here for a long time, and we we just have all of the other expectations around us, yeah, and this pressure of like even if we still had pressure when we're away, it's different. You don't feel it the same way. I agree with that, but also I will add to that that I think friends. There's a lot of actually Natalie Portman agrees with me. Just saying. Uh, <laughs> okay, <laughs> authority yeah, yeah. argument. <laughs> yeah. No, Bitches, but, please. <laughs> but in France, there's this whole pressure of like how you look, how no, there's a lot less freedom. Mm. Maybe not in China, because in China it might be like regulated a little bit. I don't know. Mm, it's different because yes, at the same time you have a lot of pressure, especially to be uh, like really thin and white. Yeah. But I'm naturally white, so I didn't have mm. that problem. And generally, when you are a student in China, it's pretty much expected that you're not gonna be like dressing well all uh, the time, you just expected not to. Uh, and yeah, I had the... like. But at the same time, it was really beneficial for me, because I used to have to wear makeup every day. Yeah. Kind of got a sense of, no one really cares. Mm -hmm. And no one, yeah, no one will care about that. And that's liberating in a way. Yeah, but like, what? I, yeah, that is true. I think that depends on where you were before. Yes, exactly. That really depends. Because like, after Berlin, or the US, or... Even like, um, especially UK and Berlin actually, anyone can be of any style and hang out with who they want. Mm -hmm. Whereas in France, if someone's goth, all his friends are going to be goth. You feel like it's more clicky. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. like, like we, like everyone talks about like the French, like we actually we mentioned that. Oh, uh, everyone talks about abroad the French style. You know. Yeah, but I don't get it. Me neither. I don't see it, but it's uh, very much exists. See it. I don't see it either, but I think we're too used to it. Yeah, probably, but... Yeah. But like, the, uh, like, literally in the US, when we came up, before we said a word, they were like, oh, you're one of the French students. And I was like, how do you do that? And like, there's a, there's a specific way that French people dress that you can spot them from, like, far away. I guess, you, like, but you're, like, really the classy French. Like, you're put together, so that's fine. No, but really, like, uh, even everyone, like, you know the... The teacher would like say like you, we see a group of people and we can tell they are the French group of people because mm. apparently like there's something about how I don't I I don't see it either I don't know what yeah, it is like I, that's funny because I I heard about the fact that a group of French people is like recognizable mm -hmm. but it was for different reasons Awful. like uh, like that was that's something that my mom told me when she traveled when she was younger mm -hmm. with like a group of her friends like when they arrived in hostels they would guessed that they were French, just because they said that everyone in the group looked like they could be from a different European country. Oh. And the fact that like, when you have a group of people yeah. who are obviously together, but they all look like they could be from all different parts of Europe, they're uh, probably okay. French. Oh, I've never heard that. It's quite yeah, I don't, I, I don't know if it's true, but the fact that probably like we basically yeah. are a mix of every Europe, yeah. <laughs> European country, we <laughs> just... That. So, that's but the thing too, but I like that's different. That's different. The easy way to spot a French person it's like looking at their building and be like, hmm, Versailles looks better. <laughs> we do that, don't we? Like, 
Not all of us, but like people that I feel French who travel <laughs> for the first time. Yeah, not not necessarily like Versailles, but yeah, we like, mm, but like in Paris or mm, but mm. like in Lyon, I saw that thing. And yeah. Oh, but like oh, in our museums or. Yeah, I went when I was. We're in, too proud of our culture. <laughs> we are like, so we're proud. Really proud. Like w when I was living in the UK, I had a friend who called me. I was like, yeah, so I don't know why I don't. I'm not making any friends, and I was like, oh wow, and I was like. Probably you're doing this thing that French people do, comparing everything we have and say it's better. He was like, no, I don't do that. And then I swear, the next day on his Facebook, he put a picture of Buckingham Palace and wrote, it's not Versailles after all. And I'm like, that's exactly like, that's what like, you're doing. <laughs> like, like, I'm a f like, <laughs> like, I'm, I'm so sad because like, don't, like, don't, don't, don't give that I image know, of French people, time. please. I know. Like, that's also you're giving us a bad reputation. I think that's also the thing with culture shock is when you see people of your own like nationality and you realize and, and yeah and they don't fit in and you're like man like you know mm -hmm. I think in every Erasmus group there's one of, like the guy in my Erasmus group the first time one of the guys from Jordan and the Greek guy just never fit in and they were like mm -hmm. always like so sticking to their own culture and so they never because they didn't want to mix and match it never happened because mm -hmm. they didn't want to adapt to each other yeah and like the people who are from their culture were like, I swear we're not like that. <laughs> yeah, that's that that happens a lot. Yeah, yeah, that, like... that does happen a lot. And like for the friends group, yeah, there's also the problem of the difference of humor, sense of humor. Like yeah. I, we talked about, like we like not on the video, like we just talked Talk about it together. We, yeah, we talked about that. The fact that sense of humor is different depending on the culture. It's so different. And then like. When making friends, even if you really make efforts, if you have a different sense of humor, that can be really difficult. Like that clash. Yeah. But, but, but I've seen that a lot with like British and Germans. Because mm -hmm. like British only I use sarcasm. Love, I love it's British humor. Right? That's it's perfect. Hilarious. Like I know. But that's like don't ever say to a British guy that he's not like funny. He'll be offended like you've never seen. Like so But they're funny, so, so I it, I won't yeah. have to tell them they're not funny because British yeah. people are funny. funny. But it's like re a lot of sarcasm and like self... Really dry and yeah. self-deprecating humor. Yeah, self I love it. It's perfect. But in Germany, they don't do that. So yeah. in Germany, like, every time like one of the British guys would make a, a joke of like, oh yeah, that was stupid, typically me. And the Germans are like, oh, don't say that about you. Yeah, like, like, like oh, but like, they care. <laughs> and you're like, no, that was a joke. Like, a joke. you're making me feel bad about my joke. That was just like... <laughs> A thing I said. And just laugh and like you know. don't don't make it a big deal. I know. Please. That's the thing. And yeah, it, sometimes like the, the the way the culture works and the humor just doesn't work together. Mm. And also, I think another thing that is hard sometimes to handle with culture shock is like when you think a culture is close to yours, so you don't think see the culture shock coming, and then it's still there, and you just like sort of don't accept it. Mm -hmm. I had that with like the USA at the beginning. I was like, US is not that different from. I have like I have. Like for the, for the record, I've like been only two years when I was really small and I don't yeah. really remember it. But for me, the culture is really different. In like, like no, but I had lived in the UK. Okay, so yeah. Like, so I was thinking like Anglo-Saxon, you know, has I, was, I didn't think it was similar, but I think it was gonna be super easy. Mm -hmm. It was. It wasn't. I was so surprised because I was like, I was thinking like you know, almost being there done like like close enough, and it was like so different. Yeah, like so different. Like the Halloween party I told you about. Yeah. Where everyone's wearing lingerie and you're like. Mm. Well, I'm there to look. <laughs> like, do you want a jacket? You're gonna be cold. <laughs> it literally happened. Like, one of the girls was like wearing like thigh high boots in the bikini, and she's like, "Oh, I'm cold." I'm like, "It's the 31st of October, and you're half naked on the street. It's bound to happen." I'm gonna close your window. Ah, yeah. Mm. Like, I think that in general, the culture shock is always bound to happen, like anywhere you go. Yeah. You necessarily gonna have a culture shock. You can have a culture shock within your own country. Yeah. And within your own culture. Yes. Yeah, anyway. So I guess like how like how do you deal with that? It's probably to just accept it. Like yeah. it's it's going to happen, you just And have an open mind. Yeah. Like, just don't go take it. Yeah. yeah. Just take it as it comes. And you can just accept part and yeah. Yeah, you like it doesn't mean that you're losing yourself because no. you can get into it and not necessarily forget who you are, but accept that the other one is different and that his way of doing could be the actual proper way and that you're not necessarily the one who's right. Yeah, and, and that's quite you can, and you can take the best and take what could yeah. be interesting and learn some yeah. skills and some way of seeing things, a new perspective, gaining a new perspective, and just bringing it back with you. Yeah. 
That's true. And that's the beauty of travel. It is. What you should say was so beautiful. Yeah, I know. Like that was like the hashtag deep philosophical thinking. Hashtag deep talk. Self-deprecating humor. Hey. Hey, we did it. Can we have a passport? I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> Brexit joke, but maybe that's not the right moment. I think it's too early. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, I hope you like this video. I will put all of our links down below and yeah, go, go check, check out our out. video because, like, um, the video we did on Tara's channel is like absolutely hilarious. And so, yeah, I hope you like this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next week with a new travel mission videos. I never get the sentence right, ever. It's just like, like, what was the sentence? Like, maybe you're trying to say it too fast. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, feel free to subscribe, and I'll see you next week with the new travel and fashion videos. Until then, have fun, guys. Ciao, ciao.